to the SSPX podcast. In this eighth and for now final episode in our Digital Danger series, we briefly take stock of the lessons learned in earlier episodes while focusing on what Catholics must do to keep their families and themselves safe in the digital age. Catholics may feel like they cannot keep up with all the dangers modern technology brings. They may even feel out of step with the world. As Father Jonathan Kopeck discusses in this episode, Catholics are often called to stand apart from contemporary society, including its comforts and conveniences. But as Father also highlights, this is not a cause for despair. For as keepers of the true religion who trust in God's providence, we can overcome the world. Thank you for listening to our series on Digital Dangers. Now, here is Father Kopeck. Hi, Father Kopeck, welcome back. Uh, this is our final episode in a way of the series. Uh, we'll have a few others that come with time sort of as appendices to this, but now that we've gone through um, an analysis of the problem, some of the different circumstances that, that aggregate the problem, some of the different applications, um, something that's been hinted at throughout the whole series, uh, yeah, the, the practical suggestions, the practical tips, uh, and I think this episode we want to go through uh, both on the level of, of mindset and action. Yeah. Now that we understand or have some sense of the gravity and complexity of the problem, what can we do? Mm -hmm. So um, why don't you, why don't you launch out into the deep here, <laughs> father with, um, with where you want to start with practical suggestions? Sure. I, th I think there's just three things we want to look at Okay. in general. And that's kind of the mindset we want to have, the practicality that we want to have in order to apply that mindset. And then we'll finish off with just here are some very practical great things. Um, as far as the mindset, I start with that because it really is the most important thing. We're, we're dealing with an ever changing world. And often that's, uh, <clears throat> often that's um, the uh, kind of one of the main objections, like, well, how are you going to be able to regulate any of this? It's, it's always changing. Yeah. It is. Um, so that just means that our mindset needs to be, um, offensive you know on the yeah. offense so uh, very often we come across danger we go into defense mode you know it's like oh well i gotta uh, and we lock ourselves up and don't get me wrong we're gonna talk about you know protecting yeah. and things like that but no in order to actually navigate this technological world well we have to be on an offensive uh front we yeah. have to be thinking i'm in a battle and that battle is for my soul and for my family's souls. I have the strength of Almighty God behind me. I mm -hmm. have the revealed true religion. I have all the good principles. I just, I need to keep learning them um, and acting off them. I need to keep fighting. And so to use kind of a, um, a somewhat, at least contemporary term, I don't know if I would call it a modern term, but a contemporary term to describe this is like proactive. So I'm, yeah. I'm not I'm not being just reactive. I'm not just complaining. I'm not just yeah. accusing people of things. Let's get proactive about this. Let's do things. Um, and that, that has to be our mindset because as long as you have that principle of, you know, these things are dangerous and I need to do things to protect myself and my family, I'm gonna keep looking for ways to do that. So I might yeah. I might have found the perfect app, you know, and it, and it works well and it seems like it really locks things down. I'm not just gonna be satisfied with that. I'm gonna say, okay, what else can I do? You know, how can yeah. I make up for, you know, whatever issues there were in the past? Or how can I make sure that, um, you know, there's not gonna be loopholes? Like it, yeah. th there's a whole universe again that's trying to get in. Um, and we and we have to have this mindset of I'm proactively battling against it, and um, it makes you think, kind of back to what we were saying in the last episode. You and I talked about it afterwards. Kind of that notion of the Catholic, especially the Catholic youth, just kind of being the weird ones. Yeah. You know, um, the 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 we feel like we're kind of outliers in this world, and uh, we were both saying just I mean how true that is, and, and yeah. in fact not only true, but I mean that's you know without. Without getting weird in, in the actual sense and the, in the idea of like, well, we want to be counter culture by some sort of strange, you know, uniqueness about me. Yeah. That's not the point. The point is, though, is that um, w we have to be different. Like, it, it's not yeah. it's not optional. As, as a consequence of our beliefs. As a consequence of I believe yeah. in something that is contrary to the world. And, and yeah. the founder who is divine of my religion said, you know, you will be a contradicted by the world like i am a i am a sign of contradiction to the world and you my followers will also be persecuted you know like yeah okay yeah. let's buckle down and and get real with this because it's we're going to be weird um at least as at least the ideas the principles the things that we're fighting against we can't just say 
well, for the sake of being normal, we have to find ways to to inculcate the modern world into our our, our lives. That's already going to be there. Um, if yeah. anything, we should be having the mindset for the sake of being sanctified. I need to find ways to balance the already inevitable inculcation of the modern world into my family. That's how we should be going about it. Yeah, that's the proactive mindset. So that means we got it. We got to get used to drawing hard lines. Um, in, in in how you know in what we let into our family what we let our kids watch or listen to and what we do with ourselves if we if we don't you know entertain some hard lines and just this i'm not going any farther than this and i'm yeah. not and don't even i'm not even going to go up to the edge because that's not how you treat things that you love ho hopefully hopefully yeah. meaning your soul here and god's will um but to stay a few feet back from the edge how do i how am i going to fight against the spirit of the world and especially the pornographic spirit of the world for example i mean um, if we all, you know, just started to really make ourselves re you know, settle on some hard truths and some hard principles, just how we, how am I going to allow my family to dress? You know, how, how are, mm. how am I going to raise my children to think about relationships? Um, what principles of morality am I going to have in my relationship yeah. or, or even my affection in my family with my spouse? I mean, if all those things are tainted by the spirit of the world of pornography, meaning that they tend tend to the selfish rather than um, rather than the respectful or the the sacred, then we have to draw a hard line there. There are some things that Catholics can just not entertain as a possibility, yeah. even if they don't seem yeah. necessarily that bad right right out of the gate or something like that. That's 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 and that's and that's just the spirit of like the the, the impurity part again, but that, that keeps coming back just because of how connected it is to what we're talking about. Um, but just a proactive mindset it for everything as, as well yeah. it, in tech use in general. It's just I, I, we have to have this mindset of um, we're going to have to draw some hard lines and that's going to be difficult and it's going to be inconvenient yeah. and it's going to bring inconveniences. Yeah. And it's going to bring inconveniences that are, are really, really nice to not have, like being able, yeah. I don't know, you know, just, but okay, that's. It, that's uh, that's working out our, our 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 salvation with fear and trembling in, in a sense. So, um, so constant battle, proactive mindset, and then the last kind of mindset that we want to have, or at least include in that, is trust in God. It's we're not going into this with a spirit of panic, of reaction, of despair, of woe is us. We uh, we're definitely in dark times, but the world has always been in dark times in one way or another, um, and and we have the confidence of 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 grace of Christ's victory of the of the protection of the holy ghost of you know of the sacraments like we we have all these these great helps that come from God himself and his love and we can put absolute trust in them maybe perfectly a piece of soul just saying okay well how am i going to to fight this battle yeah the, the trick is that trust is only really going to work if we have those other two mindsets in the first place that you know that willingness to fight and that proactive got to keep looking for ways to be on the offense and not just on the defense if we have those yeah mindsets then that trust will play out because christ can work through us but if it's you know if it's well, i'm only doing half what i should be um well then the chances are he's only going to be able to work with so much he, he doesn't yeah. push us you know so those are all integrated in your mind those are all Absolutely. part of the one package Yep, okay. and, and and it applies not only just to our own technological use, but how we're gonna you know do rules for our families, and then especially I would say those three things as well: constant battle, proactive mindset, trust in God. Um, those also apply to let's say any individual that might find themselves in a, in a more dire state, you know, an addiction okay. either to just technology in general or to to um, sins of impurity, whatever it is, like a. Um, th 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 those, th that same mindset 100% applies. It's, it's, um, you gotta, you gotta be ready to fight for the rest of your life, um, okay. against very difficult odds and enemies, but have a confidence and peace of soul because we have the truth as long as you're willing to put it in, into, into action proactively. <laughs> okay. So that's the first thing is that that's our mindset. That's the mindset. That's the mindset. Okay. We want to, we want to, that's, we have to start with that. We have to keep going back to it sort of almost, you could say, um, like a, a regular, examination of conscience okay. you know like once a month or something or somewhat regularly in your life go back to okay what is you know have i been letting things yeah. go and where, where can i where can i renew this 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 fervor of my mindset against the influence of the world um and, and towards the trust in god so once we have that part established let's say and that's in a sense yeah a goal because we're gonna have to keep working 
towards it, excuse me. Um, then point two is, okay, how, how are we going to do this as far as how are we going to plan this battle, right? So we have, we have uh, Got it. We're, we're in the modern world. Most of us have multiple technological devices. Um, how are we now going to take what we've learned and apply it to um, what should I do? Yeah. We started with mindset. The next thing is still kind of intellectual as far as planning the battle, and that's that's our principles. We need to make sure our principles are clear. So that's that's what we've been doing. We've been talking mm -hmm. about these things. Get some books. We'll have lists of books in the description that we yep. need to read because we need to inform our intellect in order to make these good acts of our will. Um, we absolutely need to pray. Um, that's, I mean, that has to be included. It's not just an, an addendum, our spiritual life. If, if we're trying to go at a balanced use of technology without, without emphasizing the need for our spiritual life, we're going to fail. Um, yeah. Because uh, that a whole idea of something be, being more alluring or something being more easy um, very much comes into play, even when it just comes into our peace of soul and our, our habitual state of mind. It's easier to worry about the problems of the world than it is to spend concrete time looking at the providence of God, even though the providence of God is completely and manifestly capable of dealing with the problems of the world. Sure. You know, because he already has. that The, the sum of all evil was overcome by the sum of all good. And, um, but, but it, in a sense, it's easier for us to just, you know, to, to lose our mind scrolling through all the, the terrible news bites, you know? So we have to have an emphasis on, I need to grow in my spiritual life. Otherwise all these things are really only gonna, they're gonna pop up and then they're gonna die. So read principles, pray our spiritual life. We need to think about things. And then lastly, as far as our principles go, we need to talk about things, you know, talk, talk to other members of your parish. Spouses need to talk to each other, talk to your children, especially your older children, talk figure out, okay, what do we want? Because then that's the next thing. Once you have your principle, what you're gonna base your decisions off of, then obviously the first in, ex in execution is, sorry, the first in, in deciding what your execution and the last in the actual doing it is your goal, your end. So uh, um, okay. I can't remember the exact phrase, but you get me philosoph philosophically. It's the, <clears throat> the first in your thought process, the last in your execution. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's the end. So pick your goal. So the goal is, okay, I want a better technological use in my own life and my family. What concretely is my goal? Because if we just say I want to do things better, pff, good luck. It's um, how do you want to do things better? Do you want, is your goal that you'll use social media sometimes? Terrible goal. Is your, is your goal that you don't want to have, you know, this capability in your family at all? Okay, that's a good goal, um, you know, whatever that might be practically speaking. So now you can now you can pursue it, but come up with a con concrete. How do I want my day to look? How do I want my my concrete yeah. use of things to look? Um, and that's going to be different depending on 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 you know our state in life. But I would say after everything we've seen, I don't think it's too much to say that our goal should be something along the lines of as little as possible. It, yeah. It. I mean that that only makes sense after you know kind of delving through all the the dangers that we've had to look through, and especially for our children, for especially for our family, our goal should be, okay, um, I don't. I wanna make as little allowances as possible. And then concretely, yeah. this is how I want it to look. So, so yeah, sorry. I mean, maybe this is the right place, maybe not to, to throw out one of the common questions, <clears throat> maybe not an objection as such, but yeah, as I plan out my day and I plan out even my life, uh, right, what do I do if I'm, let's say already working in the tech industry hmm. somehow. Yeah. That's a really, really broad topic, right? Or there's many ways one could say, you could say you're working in the tech industry. Um, but yeah, is is there a, or or indirectly I rely on tech, you mm -hmm. know, I, I'm a doctor on call or, a, you know, right. law enforcement of some sort. There, There's all kinds of, for good yeah. or ill, there's all kinds of people who say, hey, look, that's all great father. But, <laughs> Sounds like it'd be nice, but, but yeah. yeah um, is that just a question of well, yeah, this is what you mean by we're gonna have to draw the lines in different um, places? It, it kind or? of. I mean, I mean, I think we can give a, a little bit more concrete of a principle to to make your decision off of. But yeah, because I mean, you're right. It's it's a general question. Yeah. Um, and so it'll have a, have to have a, a bit of a general answer. But I mean, the, the answer is is going to be you have to balance. So let's say um, you know your your job is uh, like a studio producer or something mm -hmm. like that. 
Um, you don't have to deal with immoral content. It's not it's not a relative thing, but you're constantly in the technological world in one way or another, even the, even to some degree, the social media world. Okay, well, we've talked about how those things are at the very least intrinsically dangerous. If they were intrinsically evil, we would say, sorry, you can't do it. Time to quit your job. Yeah. But if they're just intrinsically dangerous, then that means you have to proportion um, a balanced response to that in your life. So that might mean something like you have that much more of an obligation to make sure you're balancing out your natural life. So you have to, okay. you know, you got to get outside. You got yeah. to read actual books. You got you to exercise. You have to put yourself into contact with, with, with reality, even just nature, like all those things that balance yeah. out um, a, a, a day that's heavily influenced by a virtual reality that you're that much more responsible. And if, and if you can, if you can do that, if you can balance it out, well then great. And if you can't though, if it's just something that's consuming you and it's yeah. actually starting to affect, you know, your ability to pray and there's no end in sight and all that sort of thing. Well then that's when it starts to become, okay, well maybe this isn't actually the job for you. And yeah. I wouldn't say that until I've, you know, until you've given it, you know, you've given it a try. Okay. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to get on the digital minimalism band, bandwagon and I'm going to do what I can to, to balance things out and if you can't and if you just you're still just by the end of the day you're just fried you can't be you can't fulfill your duty of state at least towards god and your family well then that that's not the yeah. job for you period yeah um, it'd be it'd be better if you had if you downsized at least somewhere along that but if you can balance it great and, yeah. and, that, and that's as that's as i think that's as close as we can get to a practical solution despite i mean um besides what we're about to say as far as other practical tips so Take these practical tips, apply them the best you can, balance it out as much as you can, and that's that's the first kind of answer. The only thing I would add to that is that the the other balance is that if it's a question of morality, you know, if someone is a studio producer or they have to have a work phone or something like that, and they are consistently falling into sin because mm -hmm. of that necessity of technological use. Okay, step one, obviously you do everything you possibly can to lock that down. If it's not working, then that again, it, it this might sound, I think this would sound crazy to uh, to an outsider's ears, but that job isn't for you. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how good good of money you're making. Thing, it would be better if you were flipping burgers if it meant that you can stay in the state of grace. Yeah. Not only not only for you, but for your family. And so, I mean, obviously, again, to, you know, in, in full disclosure, like you know, we do. You, you're allowed to do what you can. You can you can try all mm -hmm. the different steps and things like that, all the different practical helps and suggestions. But if it's not working, at least on a consistent basis. Then it's time to change, and that's what it, that's what we mean by hard lines, and, and that's yeah. difficult. That that's extremely difficult. But um, I mean, that's that's the balance that that we have to tread. So, right, fair enough. Is that, is that sort of I think thing? so. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So yeah, and then well, I, I guess we'll get to you take that idea of balancing and you try and make a practical solution with it. So that that's the goals we're picking. So. When it comes to, okay, now, so let's say whether you're in one occupation or another, whether you're a mother or a, a father or a, just a single person living on their own, whatever it is, you've come up with your goal. This is how I want my life to look. These mm -hmm. are the things I don't want to be doing because I don't need them, um, et cetera. Then um, just a little, you know, help tip as far as how to make good acts of our will, how to follow along, follow on with our um, resolutions uh, we have to make them very concrete, first of all. Okay. You know, this is exactly what I do want to do and what I don't want to do. Then we have to like be human enough and humble enough to really plan it out as if we're a child. Okay, this I want to do this. You know, so get a piece of paper, for example, and this is what I want to do. Um, this I know is going to be my my normal obstacle. So it could be, for example, like I want to I want to say my morning prayers instead of check my phone every morning. That's a okay. concrete goal. Yeah. Um, hopefully, there's a lot more concrete goals yeah. that you're deciding on. But let's just use that as an example. And well, the first thing that you do though is every morning you just habitually wake up and you check your phone and then dopamine hits and then you're scrolling to things it's like okay how am i going to work around that every night i'm going to charge my phone in the kitchen and you've decided that and then when you before you go to bed you go put your phone in the kitchen instead of set it instead of next to your instead of next to your bed you've you've provided the circumstances for you yeah. to more easily follow along with that act of the will that's a human way of treating yourself um, and then lastly, when it comes to like, let's say you've, you've arranged all those circumstances, when the moment comes, it's very important just from the point of view of growing in our willpower, so to speak, that we don't allow um, other possibilities to creep in. So, you know, if, mm. if, I, if I decide, well, I'm going to charge my phone in, 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 the, in the kitchen every night and that, that seems reasonable and I should do it. And then one night you're, you're thinking, well, I mean, 
uh, well, man, maybe it's not such a big deal. I guess I, I, yeah. I kind of want to check the score first thing in the morning, see how that game ended. Um, <clears throat> and the moment you start to allow the possibility, really what you've told yourself is that actually that prudential work that I just did doesn't matter. Mm. And that that wrecks the whole enterprise of you making a good act of the will and sticking to your resolution. So keep it simple, keep it practical, try and arrange as many oppor- uh, circumstances and remove obstacles as possible. And then when the time comes, execute it just blind. Like you just got to follow through almost robotically because that's okay. how we grow in our will. Um, and I'm just setting the stage for you know sure. actual more practical things. But this, I, I think this it's important to say this out loud just because uh, many of us don't, we just don't have the habit of making. It's not something we're yeah. we're used to having to do when there's a lot of things that can do things for us. But yeah. So that's so as far as making your goal, your family plan, your personal plan doable, um, be that practical and be that simple and humble about it. And then lastly, though, the part of the mindset is that nothing is just one and done. You know, stick with what works, mm. even if it starts to get boring. Um, and then don't be satisfied with just some basic things that you've done. Always be looking for, okay, well, um, I shut that down, I got that out of my life, but is that gonna be enough? You know, so it's like, yeah. well, a lot of people say, well, I deleted my social media accounts because, okay, I get it, and it was an occasion of sin, and so I'm not, um, but then three months later, it's like, ah, you know, I, yeah, I, I got Snapchat again. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, maybe next time to have a good resolution of will, you can get one of those apps or a phone that, you, makes it so that you can't download Snapchat yeah. again, you know, and that's okay. Uh, we we hate that as human beings. I've yeah. noticed because we'd much rather say, no, no, I'm going to stick to my will. I made a choice. Yeah. Um, th- no, don't do that when it comes to something that's neurologically stronger than you. And that that's tech use in general. We have to be humble enough to say it's not going to be enough for me to just rely on my willpower. That's that's tech use in yeah. general, especially for kids. But that's that's again to just go back to the to the beast. That's pornography, especially. And we we already talked about that as far as like we can't presume that our willpower or even our willpower with our prayers is going to be sufficient, because yeah. this is neurologically, physically stronger than I am, and so I need to make it impossible. We kind of need to do that with all of our resolutions here. We can't just say, all right, I'm going to resolve not to be on Facebook every day for two hours. Now do something so that you cannot be on Facebook for two hours, even if you wanted to. Yeah. Now you've made a good practical resolution. Now that's, that's important. And then maintenance, you know, again, do it again and again and again, yeah. and keep, keep, keep checking in on yourself and keep doing that examination of constants and keep 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 trying to be enter- honest with yourself. Okay, well, I've allowed myself this, and now two months later, do I really need it, or maybe I can cut out some more? You know, you always yeah. probably can. So that's that's how to plan our battles. We have our mindset. We got to fight a battle. We got to be proactive about it. Trust in God. Be at peace. But I got to be practical. So then we come up with our principles, then our end goals, our practical solutions, and then how am I actually going to execute it? Follow it blindly, and then do maintenance for the rest of your life. Yeah. That's our battle. And our battle is way more important when, you know, each of us, individual, whoever's listening to this, your battle is way more important than any practical tips I'm about to give. Because that's what we'd like to be like, well, Father, tell me what to do. Give me the apps, right? Yeah. And, but, um, and those things will help, but none of them are going to be nearly as helpful or as important as what you choose to do to take care of your own life. Um, and, and and not only that, but that's essential for your children's success as well, your family's success. It's there's there are no books or apps or routers that are going to, you know, yeah. suffice for the 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 rules and the principles and the way that you live in your family. Um, it, it just can't suffice at all. Okay. So, so um, that's enough of the abstract things, I guess. Yeah. Um, unless it you no, know, I think I think we should go into the okay. We should go pra- into the tips. Practical. Here yeah. we go. Tips. Um, the first tip I would say is, uh, I, <laughs> this is still kind of abstract, I guess, to be, uh, but, um, it's, it's digital minimalism that yeah. th- th- we could call that a practical tip and what digital minimalism means. So it's, it's a, it's a term I more or less kind of coined by Cal Newport, right? So he wrote the book, digital minimalism, which is very mm-hmm. worth reading. Okay. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't, I don't know enough about the man or his, sure. you know, his beliefs. I'm not, you know, uh, plugging Not even, for right. some sort of full support but it's a good book to read especially in as far as all this context goes but the idea is that we 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 try and practically put in our life um as little need and re- and reliance on technology as 
practically possible. So if I okay. don't need to use technology for this, I won't. Okay. Um, that's that's like digital minimalism, strictly speaking. You know, can there be some allowances? For example, I'd, I'll be the first one to admit that if I need to navigate somewhere, I'd much rather use some sort of GPS device than rely on my map reading skills, sure. especially if it's, a, you know, and, but strictly speaking, digital minimalism, the idea would say, if I don't have to use that GPS, I'm going to use a map, which is fine. <laughs> yeah. Would that but, go so far as, you know, uh, instead of emailing someone, I'm going to call them? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, all those things. And I, and I think the more relevant the, the digital use thing is, the more we want to get digital minimalism in there. So okay. relevance meaning, you know, yeah, social interaction. Um, don't don't satisfy for something artificial when you can have a better communication either face-to-face -face or through a phone call or even through a written letter or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, Entertainment, I think, is the other big relevant thing. It's don't settle for digital entertainment when you when you are still a stranger in this natural universe that that God gave you, or, or a stranger to the world yeah. of of intellectual entertainment, whether that's that's music, the arts, literature, you know, or or things like that. So practically speaking, and that's why I said it still has to be kind of abstract. But practically speaking, we all want to find ways in our life to replace our digital, um, you know, reliance, our, di our digital dependency. Yeah. So like, you know, um, like we said, e either uh, as, as far as how we interact with people, how we gain knowledge, how we study, um, how we organize our day, like, it, you know, it, it, it actually would be preferable if we're really trying to just declutter, de-digitalize our life, you know, to rely more on, you know, a, a piece of paper and, and, a, mm. and, a, and a planner that way than to always be plugging things into our digital calendars and things like that. Just the, the and I'm not saying any of that's evil. Yeah, I'm yeah. just saying that the, the less I'm relying <laughs> on or putting my kind of my life on that shallow world of technology, the better. Um, and then to find practical replacements for it. So like getting outside, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. um, you know, even th there's a, there's a very valid, I think, way of thinking that says, even if I don't need to interact with nature to survive, I'm going to force myself to interact with it in order to, you know, um, to balance out my human nature, you know, yeah. so we were, we were created as, as stewards of the land, so to speak, you know, like not yeah. even so to speak, that's what God said. So, you know, work <laughs> the land. Um, so that means that, you know, you might not need chickens uh, to keep yeah. your family alive, but if you have the ability to raise some sort of livestock or to, you know, to have a garden or to, yeah. to make your kids chop wood or, you know, whatever it might be, we might not need any of those things because we have the grocery stores, all those sort of things. But um, to, to, in a sense, to force ourselves to not need, and I, I guess I, I kind of sidled off of technology, but I'm talking no, more I that kind of broad sense. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's related because I think I mean so much of what you have discussed this this whole series is the detachment from reality and all the problems that flow from the detachment of reality. So I'm not wrong in thinking more or less what you're saying here is to the extent you can replace a digital life with I mean it sounds like cliche and simple but life in reality yeah in nature it, with real human beings to yeah. the extent that you can we not only we not only need that to stay balanced but what's interesting is that those things can heal us as well you know yeah what whether we're talking about our, our you know our nervous state of mind our disorders yeah. our, our addictions um, one of the one of the very simple ways that uh, the whole world of psychology is is starting to really latch onto is you know um, get outside and, and yeah. get in contact with reality. It will he actually heal you. Yeah. And and I don't mean sorry. I don't mean in some sort of like Eastern like you know, New energy. Age. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. mean that kind of healing. Healing yeah. in the sense of if your neuroplastic brain has a chance to work with things that are designed by God to correspond at the same time and proportion to how it's designed. Mind, yeah then you're going to balance it out physically mentally emotionally like that's what i mean like yeah. you're actually going to be healed by contact with real things so um things that grow things that live things that are beautiful things that are ordered right. not things that are digital <laughs> yeah no it seems like there's a um a growing awareness and i guess on the one hand it can lead to a sort of consequentialism but yeah you see now like studies scientific studies saying well yeah it seems that someone who takes a walk for yeah. half an hour outside has or looks all these at a sunset or or oh, right or has bare feet every now and then yeah right. uh -huh. all the yeah it over yeah exactly there's tons of these yeah, yeah. um 
I would like to argue, and I think you would too, that those things are good in themselves. Yeah. But it does, it does, it's almost, I so, mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's a commentary on our situation that yeah. now it's like you have to, con- yeah, you have to convince people that like, hey, you know, going outside may have benefits. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they are good in themselves, 100%. Yeah. That we, we, and, but I would even say, I mean, there, you could go two sides of that as well. They're not only good in themselves, they're healing if we've been wounded, let's say, in, in the sense yeah, that's of interesting. Our, our technological wounds or overuse or fatigue even abuse, things like that. Um, But also I would take that one step further and say, they're so, we are so connected to the, to, to the world that God created us in that in a sense, this isn't just optional. Yeah. You know, we, it's, this isn't just a nice option in the sense of like, look, if you're an office worker, it'd be really good if you took a walk from time to time. Um, It's, it's, it's becoming evident that if we don't intentionally step out of the materialistic industrialized technological world and put ourselves in basic contact with reality, we're losing the ability to know the ultimate reality. And that's, Mm. so that's not optional. I'm not saying that you're bound under pain of mortal sin to go on a walk every day, but I yeah. am saying that you are bound to some degree to balance yourself out, especially your family, your children, because they need that balance in their informative years more than you might in your in your later years. But it, it's not optional for you to try and um, come in contact with created reality, whether that means just the physical breathing, living world or, mm-hmm. or ideas of more real ideas of, of beauty and intellectualism. Um, study, um, and then your spiritual life. Like th- these, these, op- yeah. these things are not optional because otherwise we're not going to know the reality. It's it's how it's it's the first way that God gave us the chance to know Him. You know, it, it's yeah. it's reasoning off of His effects. And if we're not coming in contact with yeah. those effects, then we're, we're <laughs> this is like the God wrote. I forget is it Isidore. Someone says you know God wrote two bo- two books: the Book of Nature and the Book of Revelation. I'm paraphrasing that, but sure. that is ultimately yeah. what you're. What yeah. you're getting at, right? Yeah. I mean, this is to the extent that you know natural reason can discover some of these truths. It's in contact with reality. Yep, and, yeah. and probably not. Yeah, screens. Not. Yeah, and, and again, that that's all the more case for for kids. Yeah. So that's. I mean, that's our first tip. Okay, it's, okay. it's a it's a bit broad. Yeah. But I mean, the but conclusion broad in a good it, way because it can be realized in a lot in a of lot diff- of different ways. Yeah. I mean, like I said, it could be it could be you know having a, a garden. It could be looking at the stars. Looking or, at the stars. It could be just you know actually deciding I'm going to read a book once a month. Yeah. It could be I'm going to go back to learning a musical instrument yeah. or, or practice some 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 medium of art. You know, it, there's so many things that we can do instead of watching people do them on, on YouTube or instead of just plugging into some sort of completely banal entertainment. And again and again and again, all these things are off fortiori for children. You know, your children are capable of, of amazing things. And I'm not just saying that to sound sentimental. I mean, like uh, uh, it, if you give a kid a screen, you're taking away their, their chance to be the next Mozart or the next mm. Shakespeare or the next St. Thomas Aquinas, or, you know, it's like, they're, they're not going to have those abilities that they have at their, at their earliest years. If their brain is being formed to a neurological technological um, system, yeah. you know, it's, it's so, so, Sorry, they're they're gonna scream and, and whine if you turn the TV off, but um, once that's worn off, because it will, nah. they they will be more than content, like children always have been, to be out in the woods all day, or to you know to learn a musical instrument, or to be read to, or you know, so to to go back to those things as replacements um, for our digital use that's that's kind of the first tip because okay. and that's the the very the kind of important part about that is that we can take something out that we know isn't good for us. Mm-hmm. But if we don't fill it with something else, sure. a lot of times it's very hard to keep that resolution. Sure. I mean, we need to fill yeah. things back in. Okay, the next t- the next practical solution or tip, I guess I would say, is that um, have, have a have a system, a plan, a, a set of rules, let's say, for your family, like a, a policy. Um, and and that's something that would be worth uh, revisiting often. So here's just okay. an example. I'm going to give you kind of like, we can call this sort of a best case scenario, okay. but just so I'd stop saying things abstractly. Like, so for example, let, picture a family household that they have one computer okay. or maybe one tablet and okay. it's, it's the family's tablet. It's okay. under direct control of the parents. It only has internet through some sort of safe router or mm-hmm. some sort of DNS, which we'll talk about in a bit. 
um, and that's it. So that way, it's perfect accountability. It's always in a, it's always in a public location, yep. um, and it's heavily locked down. Okay. Um, and in more ways than just a password, because it, it, it's it's insufficient. Um, we see it. Uh, you see it all the time. Like kids can pick up on the little passcodes. Sure. Very even when they're two or three years old. It's 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 yeah. crazy what they can pick up on. Um, but they can also, I mean, kids are smart. They can guess, they can check. And um, going back to the not being susceptible to NMK syndrome, just keep changing your passwords and mm -hmm. keep you know making sure everything's very locked down. So if you're one, one shared device, let's say, then again, this is best case scenario. I'm not saying this is, you know, under pain of sins or sort of, but this is just my suggestion to have like one shared smartphone for dad and mom so in the sense that you know it has complete accountability it's got you know accountability apps and filtering and things like that it doesn't have social media except for work if necessary mm -hmm. um it, it's browsers it's videos are disabled because that's what the that's what the computer's for um but it's something that like okay if dad needs it for work or if mom needs it for shopping or whatever it is you know it's it's there and it can be shared and you know that's okay again it's it's a best case scenario thing because usually especially in the modern world it's it's pretty un, unrealistic to to expect that there could just be one shit but it's not definitely not impossible yeah um i don't i don't and i don't want to i don't want to be the the one that harps on the moms but in a, in a lot of ways a, a woman needs a, a smartphone a lot less often during her day to day especially if there's a computer in the house already that could be had in a public setting which is going to give her some accountability to not just be scrolling through social media all day or sure. something like that which is going to be a woman's more particular you know inclination or temptation um and we already talked about that whole scenario for a man so um it, it's not impossible to entertain it, it's it, you know okay so one shared computer maybe one shared smartphone and then one shared internet free phone so some sort of what they call dumb phone like it's yeah. it's a i'll give a list of the ones that i know about in, in a few minutes too but something with total transparency so if the kids really need to use something you know because the older kids they're going to go drop the little kids off or something yeah. you're they're sending them to a friend's house or something like that i mean there are now thank the lord um possibilities for phones that are not only completely transparent so they the kids can't hide things they can't delete things and things like that but completely internet free um and, yeah. and not just internet free in the sense of well it doesn't have service well i mean obviously your kid goes to the park he pulls yep. up next to the neighbors who have wi-fi that's unlocked yeah. he goes to the coffee store i mean there's there's a million different ways to yep. connect a device um but you, you have one kind of family phone that could be used with full transparency okay then that's th that's practically speaking and all those whatever you have technologically speaking um we have lists of you know filters and things like that but then as the kids grow up now a little bit more you know family principal um tips as the kids grow up you know parents should frequently take the time to explain why the family rules are like this you know give yeah. give them ammo and understanding to realize we're not just saying no to things that you want to do yeah. um children even pretty young can understand the ideas i we your mom your mom and i your dad and i were like we we um we're we want to protect you so much that and there's so there are bad people that want to yeah. do bad things and i don't want you to be hurt by that so that's why your mom and i that's why we have our computer in the living room and we only use it there you know like or whatever it is um and that's why we don't want you kids you know it's, and age appropriately as they grow up like like we talked about last time they need to know more and more what they're being protected from what they're choosing to avoid um then you know as they get towards the end of high school maybe they can be given some sort of you know accountable you know something that's yeah very filtered internet free probably still in, in in most ways yeah um but accountable especially something that they can share with their parents because sure. what you don't want to give them the habit of even if it's a completely internet free dumb phone you still don't want to give that to a 12 13 14 15 16 year old because what you're doing is you're giving them the habit of my personal universe yeah which is already a huge problem but if from the very get-go they know that whatever i do mom and dad can see and we're not it's not a conspiratorial thing it's not a yeah. lack of trust thing it's it's mom and dad gave me the impression like look we do this with each other yeah. you know that's that's how much we like it and if they if the child just grows up in that atmosphere it's like, oh, okay it's fine mom yeah. and dad can see what i do it's normal and it's just yeah. it's kind of like how we all used to think about when you had to call someone <laughs> you know when you were young <laughs> You couldn't just like, you couldn't just, you know, fake everything. You know, someone's going to answer the phone. You right. don't know who it is. It might be the dad. It might be the mom. It might not be. 
Um, and we're all just, that was just part of life. You know, yeah. there was that accountability there and it wasn't a lack of trust. It was just, that's, yeah. so that's, that's something. Um, <clears throat> And then, you know, then, then you have, you know, family kind of family policies, like, you know, even, if, even for adult children in our, in our house, we don't allow phones in the bedroom. Yeah. Mom and dad don't do it. Adult kids don't do it. Um, we never bring phones on family outings, um, or at meals or something like that. We, we intentionally leave them behind or we leave them in the car or something like that. Um, we have, we have very strict, and this I think is one of the most important things is we have very strict times when and this is a personal thing too when we're going to be on our computer or mm. our smartphone and when we're not and this i, I want to stay on for just a second because yeah. um it, it's the nature of the beast to uh to keep you know pushing us along it's like okay i want to i want to solve my technological addiction i want to do things better and yet it's kind of like we're in a we're on the river and we're constantly like we're navigating around the rocks like i gotta not do that you not know, crash yeah. into that that's not how you're going to change things in your life. You know, we got to think about it as you're 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 digging out a new riverbed. So stop, dam it up, turn it off, and figure out what am I going to do. You know, what are my times that I'm going to allow myself to shop, um, to send yeah. pictures to my family, um, to look some up some relevant to work to whatever it is. Um, but to plan it ahead of time, and that kind of goes back to our whole battle planning thing and practical solutions, give yourself and your family concrete times. Um, and you can make it very concrete by software that says like, you know, you'll only be able to use this app from this time to this time, like yeah. use your screen time capabilities and things like that. Don't leave things up to chance. And then definitely have a curfew, you know, like a, a, a technology curfew, yeah. like after this time, phones off this is like time budgeting time budgeting but yeah. actually do it right for <laughs> enforced time yeah yeah and, yeah and 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 don't give up on it because it's you know our first couple attempts will probably fail you know because yeah. that's it it's that powerful but if we just if we don't give up especially if mom and dad are on the same page and they and they hold each other accountable not in a not in a nagging in a distrustful way but like let's we got to do this for the good sake of our family um, then you're going to find yourself with a lot more time and a lot more peace of soul and a lot less chaos because something else has always been kind of stealing the attention. Yeah. So that that's what I would, as far as technological, that, that's kind of a best case scenario. And yeah. I don't mean best case in the sense of like, oh, good luck, but I mean really something to shoot for yeah, um, because it's, for. it's not impossible. Um, some of those things are necessary. Some of those things are, are more just, okay, work for that to the best of your ability. Okay. But, um, Okay, then lastly, I guess the, the last two things that we want to mention are, are sort of just the, the more practical resources. And mm -hmm. this is, I, I'll give a list of kind of like the things that I've come across, yeah. um, especially talking with people. But there's, there's A, there's going to be more things and, and B, yeah. some of these things are going to be irrelevant by yeah. tomorrow. And there'll be new so things. That, so, there's yeah. going to be new things. So this goes back to the constant battle thing. Yep. So when it comes to filtering, a lot of times we get that question, okay, what's, you know, what would you suggest for putting filtering so that I don't have, mm -hmm. you know, pop-up ads or that, you know, if I am tempted, I, I won't be able to, to follow through with things. The, my first answer is that don't go with cheap, free apps and software. They're worthless. They're completely worthless. You know, if, it's, if you just want the easy way out and get like porn block for free, it's, it's simply not going to work. Um, because that goes back to a, a multi-billion dollar industry finding yeah. every possible way to get onto your screen um so when it comes to those sort of apps okay the, the, the seem right now at least and, and I, i'm sure people have their own opinions and that's fine I'm, I'm happy to get as much information as we can right now it seems like one of the best apps when it comes to pornography restriction filtering is covenant eyes mm -hmm. and that's because um mostly because of one thing and that's if it's set up correctly which is a bit of a chore mm -hmm. if it's set up correctly at the very least what you can't turn off is that it does what's called screen sharing so it's it's constantly monitoring yeah. the screen so even if you bypass the covenant eyes browser you know and you can which is a possibility you know um you still can't turn off the fact that it's taking screenshots constantly and if it detects something because it's got an ai that detects explicit content it's going to alert your accountability partner yeah so if you're willing to to set it all up like that it does seem to me a, a, to be a pretty good and the other reason why it's a pretty good option is because well it's it's paid for so it's a real company mm -hmm. they're the biggest one that i know about at least right now which means um they're getting enough funding 
to stay more or less up with the game. Because okay. what, what Covenant Eyes is constantly doing is researching and then adding to their list of blockage, different, you know, website domains and things like that to yeah. constantly kind of keep. But that's, I mean, that changes right. daily, and hourly. full disclosure, we have no connection to any Full disclosure, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. We are not no, getting no disclosure. No no, if yeah. they want to send us money for what we talk about, that's fine. <laughs> but no, there's no, <laughs> yeah. no connection. Um, Anyway, that's that to me. That seems like one of the best. Uh, it's it's definitely not foolproof, but it's it's one of the best that I've seen. Um, but what I would say already is that you can do additional apps, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't have to be just one filter. You can do several different ones. You can you know download a safe browser like like Brave or something like that, and that'll block a lot of the ads and things like that. And you have Covenant Eyes on top of it, and you might even have an app like Bark. Um, Bark is a good like children's monitoring app, and you can mm -hmm. you can really tailor how you know what you want it to block and what you don't want it to block and things like that. Um, and you can have all those things on the same device. Now you have layers of protection yeah. and that's 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 very worth it. Other ones that we've heard of are, are apps called Boomerang, um, Custodio with a Q, Accountable to Me, Ever Accountable. And I've heard good things about all of those, mm -hmm. um, but n nothing's foolproof and nothing's you know yeah. just sufficient or so, but I'm just kind of we'll giving put out. These, we'll put these in the description again <clears throat> right. for people to look at. So th those, are your, those are your filtering apps, but it seems like um, filtering's never foolproof. Um, and it seems like the screen accountability thing is, is a game changer when it comes to really okay. helping someone. If you absolutely, for some reason, have to have a device, even though in, in my mind, it if something is, is more or less inevitably leading to mortal sin, then there's no justification for it. Like I said, it'd be better if you were living under a bridge or flipping burgers than yeah. living in a state of mortal sin. Yeah. yeah. Period. But anyway, th those are all, um, at least let's say from a family perspective, those are all worth looking into. Um, especially the, the the Bark app, I think, is getting better and better. And they also have their own phone. We'll talk about phones in a minute. Okay. Um, the next kind of thing would be locking down our Wi-Fi. So most families, um, as kind of a matter of course, now have Wi-Fi in their houses. Definitely not a necessary thing. Yeah. Um, something that would be worth asking ourselves, do we need this? Um but if if it is something that ends up you know being done try and and look into ways to block things at the very source so there's for example there's a, a wi-fi system called griffin um with a y and um it's it's part of its its actual um design and programming that it, it's already blocking at the very source um a, a constantly up, updated you know list of, okay. of domains and things like that but then also at the very source you can already block certain categories and things like that so that means you don't have, so that that would mean if someone snuck a phone or something like yeah. that they still couldn't use your wi-fi to to look up explicit material for example right. by and large um because but, it's blocking it at the very source of internet and to be clear a lot of these a lot of these programs can be used to block, I mean, obviously pornography, but other time wasting oh, things as well. Right. So you yeah. can, you, you know, know, with the some ability of them, to download apps like social media, right. um, different enter entertainment yeah. categories, things like that. Although, uh, again, it's always going to include that, that, that possibility of inconvenience. So, for example, like, uh, um, you know, and in, in, in our, in our priories, you know, mm -hmm. we have, if, if there is Wi Fi in the office area, it's got, you know, all, yeah. all the account of that's, that's part of the, the rule. Um, but you know it'll be frustrating sometimes. I'm trying to find. I recently I was trying to you know buy tickets to a Beethoven concert, and it was blocked because the the symphony orchestra website was labeled as entertainment. You know, so it's like, it. oh, not that kind of entertainment. But you know, so you have to, you have to, yeah, yeah, you got to work with it. But anyway, so Griffin Griffin routers um, is a is a good option. Other, there's other websites where you can basically tie it into your Wi-Fi or your your internet source in your device. Um, which is something like uh, OpenDNS or CleanBrowsing.org. What those do is they'll you can set that so that all internet comes through basically an already pre-made filter. So it's like it's it's again something you couldn't just bypass on an app because it won't be able to reach that domain in the first place. Okay. Um, so those ones are a little bit more te technologically yeah. involved. Uh, the Griffin the uh, 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 the Griffin router is not really. It's it's pretty family. It's pretty user friendly. But okay. to get into the whole DNS system is a little bit more technologically involved. Although it's not it's not that hard and. Um, like, like we said, um, we're going to try and, and, and have a very practical, mm -hmm. technological friendly to the, to the untechnologically initiated, uh, yes, video coming up. That's correct. 
Um, and, and then lastly, uh, I think the question I get the most is, okay, well, what would you suggest for a phone? And mm -hmm. again, like you said, we have no affiliation with any of yep. these companies. Um, just these are from, from what I've uh, researched, talked to people as much as I can. Um, it seems like the best internet free phone that I know of right now, I would suggest is the Wise phone um, okay. because it has uh, zero internet capabilities. But it also does have um, you can you can put music and audiobooks on it. It does have a basic GPS mm. system, and most importantly, it has um, accountability in the in the sense of you can't delete texts. It goes to a portal, like a family portal. Mm -hmm. And so, if you know, if it were a starter phone for your for your teenager, for example, um, you could, if you wanted to, look at everything that they've ever sent, and that's okay. all it could do. It could it talk text. <coughs> Um, music and, and, and GPS. So that that to me right now, um, okay. at least, is, is a pretty good option. Another option is the Light Phone, which is like a little, kind of almost looks like a Kindle. It's got like an e-ink screen. Okay. Again, talk and text only, unless you can enable it to be a hotspot, um, which then is not yeah. filtered in itself. Yeah. So that's, that's, you know, a thing. It has a very simple GPS system that's not great, quite frankly. But okay. for someone who's really looking to detect their life, it's intentionally slow and, and kind of clumsy. And the designers of it, the reason why it's called LifePhone, their, their whole philosophy is that they're trying to make our necessary communication as um as not neurologically streamlined as possible so okay. you don't you kind of end up not wanting to text you know and it's not it's not easy it's not clean and swift it's just it's kind of like little tiny you know e-ink buttons you have and to really need or you want have to really to, need yeah. you have to want it yeah so it's i i think personally i really like it as an option because it really does take you out of the screen world it's not okay. even an lcd screen you know okay. it's, it's kind of like you're very very basic so I, I like that one personally a lot so a third option for um, a dumb phone is Gab. Um, mm -hmm. It used to be that the first Gabs that came out really had nothing as far as parental control and stuff like that. But I understand now that that, that is a lot better. So there's kind of like a, a, a parent app and, yeah. and portal that you can, you know, you can monitor things and it'll, you could set it to what it want, you know, what, what it'll flag and stuff like that. So that's also a new option. I don't know much about its new controls. So that's something that I would suggest to look into if, if you're looking into that as a parent. Um, cause I remember the, the, when it first came out, um, it seemed like the, the option, but then it didn't have any parental controls at first. So then a lot of people got yeah. it for their kids, but then it just kind of became like the, the but sure. that's, uh, that's definitely been, um, then, uh, a, a lot better these days. Two more phones like that are Pinwheel and Trumi. Um, and also I believe it's called MM Guardian. Those three, those three phones. It's very similar. So they're 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 supposed to be starter phones. Okay. They're they're supposed to be very um per parental controlled. So you can you can toggle on and off, you know, will they be able to download apps? Will they be able to have internet browser? You know, what do I want to be flagged as far as, you know, not only explicit, you know, messages or content, but even just, you know, vulgar language or, or possible bullying or yeah. things like that. You can really tailor it. You could tailor it even down to, can they add their own numbers? Can they text someone that you haven't whitelisted? Yeah. A, a lot of really good things. And, and all of these phones are getting so much better at it because there's a huge reaction in in yeah. this part of the world, the, 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 the parents that care <laughs> yeah. part of the world um, that have been developing these things. So. Um, those are all worth looking into, and also, oh, and and Bark, same thing, Bark phone as well. So you got okay. your, you got as far as like the parental control ones, you have your Gab, your Bark, Pinwheel, Trumi, which is with T R O O M I, M M Guardian, um, and they're all, and they could even be used by a conscientious adult that just wants to have some aspect access to things because a lot of times you get folks that'll say, you know, I need I need um, an app on my phone to be able to. Um, you know, to, to clock into work or something mm -hmm. like that. Well, you can get a Bark phone, allow the download of that app, disallow everything else, yeah. and now you have the best of both worlds, you know, stuff like that. So it, it, the, only, the only caveat is that, I mean, the, they're very thorough and they're meant to be kid starter phones. So some of them are just going to be too constricted for a reasonable adult usage. For example, I, I think like, I'm, I'm not positive, but I think the pinwheel, for example, it, you absolutely can't get around the idea that um, 
uh, a number needs to be whitelisted before it can call you. So that okay. means if you just give someone your number, you have yeah. to make sure you put their number in first. Yeah. They might have changed that now. I don't know, but that used to be a yeah. thing. So, so you just kind of have to be, if you're sure. if you're an adult and you want to you use one of these things, then you know, yeah. just it might be a little bit hampering. Um, the last thing I would say as far as phones go, so th those are all worth looking into, the dumb phones, as they're called. Yeah. Um, I... I more and more, I really think it's the way to go to just have a dumb phone so that you're you're eliminating that that constant addiction, that constant dipping into. Mm -hmm. Or next best scenario is you know highly restrict it. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like the best case scenario is that you have a time and a place for you to be in the internet world as far as you need to, and when you're outside of that time and place, you don't. And that's yeah. and not only you don't, but you can't. Um, that's that's treating us as humanly as possible. Um, I do want to throw in one thing, and I think it's still, I haven't looked at this in a couple months, but I, I'm pretty sure it's still a thing. There's such thing as called the Gab Watch. So okay. it's just, it's a little digital watch. Um, because a lot of times you hear parents will say, well, I, I want to get, I want to have a phone for my kid because I want to know where they are. You know, I want mm -hmm. them to be able to get a hold of me. All the Gab Watch can do is you can put in a number, you will approve it, and then they can just on their watch hit text mom. I'm home or I need, I'm ready to be picked up. And it's got a little GPS so that you can look up where they are and that's it. They can't do anything else, huh. you know, um, if you don't want them to, I think yeah. it might have a couple other options, but you can, you know, if, if we're just looking for something that you just want basic security to know where your kid is or, you know, something like that, there are options. that's an option, okay. you know, or there are other options. Well, there used to be a, these things that they're like little walkie talkie things. They were kind of neat, but I think they were, they've been um, yeah. discontinued. It's basically there's there's no real excuse. There's a way to get around. If there's if there's something there, that there is a legitimate ways, reason to yeah. to need, there's there's a way to do it. There's a way without to do the it. Danger. There's a way to do it safely. Yeah. There, there really is. It might it might be it more might convenient. cost you some yeah. work, but darn, that's kind of what you signed up yeah. as. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As far as the whole parent thing goes, no, I, I yeah. To be serious, it, there are, there are there really are ways. Whether you're an adult or a parent or um, a young person, like there really are ways. As long as you're willing to take that mindset of battling, being proactive, being prudent, putting the right things on top, um, prioritizing, you, you can do it. You, okay. you really can live in this world. Take all these different options and and, and tips and and put them into your life concretely. You know, um, examine yourself often and, and we can do it we can mm -hmm. we can we can thrive and 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 save our souls in this even in this modern world but we have to be okay with being somewhat strangers in it and to some degree very strangers in it if that's yeah. what it takes to save our souls fine so that's that's what i have for um all right for our, our practical tips all um, right so i mean as we come to the end of this series if you could if you could wrap up everything in, in two minutes by way of conclusion hmm. to, to the to the whole, all eight episodes we've done so far, um, especially after yeah, after having gone through these very practical examples and tips, what's what's the uh, what's the message? Okay, uh, uh, for the, final the, the message is that the digital world is dangerous. Um, it's dangerous because it has it has intrinsic negative effects on our on our brains, on our minds, on our nervous system, and our habits of life. And then those feed into um, dangers of our, our, our stability of character, our stability of our, 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 our mental stability. Um, and those are then the foundations or the lack thereof of our spiritual life. And so even if we're just talking about the, the neurological effects of technology, we're already talking about a danger to my growth and virtue and the self, therefore the salvation of my soul. And then besides that, we talked about more particular dangers of morality, and those especially include the, you know, the influence of an anti-God culture, um, a pornographic culture, and, and then the specific dangers of pornography and how it, it's basically the plague of our times. And then, um, and then the, the culture of social media, the antithesis of, of our social nature, really. And those things are, are very relevant and um, very dangerous to our souls, our character again, and then therefore our virtue, our spiritual lives, the salvation of our souls, and all of those things together a fortiori for our children. So our, our big conclusion then is that um, there are some things in the internet digital world that are intrinsically evil, like pornography. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but by and large, we are talking about something that is intrinsically dangerous, a machine, not just a tool, a machine that's intrinsically dangerous. And therefore, it's not negotiable um, whether or not we talk about this and think about this and plan about this, because the burden is upon us. And it's it's part of the burden of our existence, let's say, but therefore it could very well be part of our work of our, the salvation of our souls. But the burden is upon us to um, to respond with prudence. We can't ignore the problem. Um, we have to keep studying it. We have to keep looking into it. We have to keep practically responding, um, because when it ta- when it deals with something that's that's intrinsically dangerous, that means that I am required, morally speaking, to find um, the balanced and prudent way to respond to using it morally. And if I don't, then well, then I, I can't be said to be in conscience using it morally is, is all what it comes down to. All right. Thank you very much, Father. It's been a pleasure, Jim. Likewise. Likewise.